So as you guys know, I've been single for a while. Two and a half years to be specific. I think going on three, I don't even know. And I've been single, single. Like, I had little flings. I've had mm, situationships. I've had lots and lots of dates. But I haven't like seriously dated anyone. I haven't brought anyone home to my family. I haven't done any of that. My choice. Anyways, being single, I like to say yes to a lot of things. So if somebody asks me to go on a date, I'm like, you know what? Why not? As long as I don't think they're like completely unattractive, then I'll go. I'll go on the date if they have good energy or if they seem to have good energy. But here's where I have messed up. I say yes to people off the street because I'm like, oh wow, nobody in Toronto approaches me. So when somebody does, I'm gonna say yes because I respect that they have the balls to do so. Yeah, I need to stop doing that. I have stopped doing that. And let me tell you why, but before I do, I'm gonna make a cup of tea and we're gonna sit down, we're gonna get comfortable and I'm gonna tell you why you gotta protect your energy. If you're an OG subscriber, you might remember my cooking videos in my parents' kitchen. We're back <laughs> with a full renovation. It's given black luxury, it's given rich, it's given not my money. <laughs> so, we're making a London Fog Latte, and we're gonna make it quick because I wanna get to the point of the video, so I'm gonna use some lactose-free milk because I like it super frothy, some vanilla syrup, and some tea. Look at this beauty. Like, mm, I should have been a barista. Honestly, I feel like I was a barista in another life because I really be doing it. Okay, so the real reason why I'm making this video is because I want to give a PSA to all women who date men that you should not be entertaining men that approach you off the street, especially if you live in a city like Toronto or New York or LA, somewhere with, honestly, with weirdos. Maybe if you live in like a more wholesome city, mm, I don't know, but over here, do not give these people your attention. Just don't do it. Unless you're in an environment for that. Example, you're at a bar, you're sitting alone with a glass of wine. If somebody approaches you, that's very normal. This is a social setting. This is where people go to meet people. If you're at the park, if you're walking down the street, dear God, don't do it. If this warning in itself is not enough, then you better keep on watching this video because I'm going to give you some stories about some men that have approached me off the street. Numero uno. I called him the Indian Prince. He was a very handsome guy, he was an Indian guy, very good looking, very tall, good job, whatever, okay? Oh, I hope he doesn't watch this. He comes up to me at a cafe in Toronto. I'm sitting there, minding my business on my laptop, you know, getting some work done. This man talks to me from the other couch. This cafe is a very open concept space, so there's like these two couches that are kind of next to each other but kind of far, and he leans over and he goes, hey, excuse me, and I was like, yeah, he's like, are you from here? And I said, yeah. And he said, okay, well, I'm not. I'm from like a couple cities over. I work down here, but I'm just looking for somewhere to have lunch. Do you know any good spots in the area? And I was like, yeah, like I'm giving him some spots, blah, blah, blah. As I'm giving him the spots, I can tell he's not listening. I can tell he's just like trying to open up the dialogue. Then we kind of get to chatting. He starts directing the conversation in other places. We're kind of sitting like across from each other. The cafe is getting busier. Somebody comes up to him and is like, hey, are you like sitting on this couch? Like, do you mind if I stay here? And he's like, oh, it's cool. Like, I'll just move over here since we're having a conversation anyways. Do you mind? I was like, sure. Picks up his stuff, moves over to my couch. We start chatting, whatever. I'm thinking this is a good vibe. He starts getting a little weird a little later, okay? Here's my flaw. I let shit drag on for too long, okay? I will know an hour in this is a bad date and I'll just keep it going A for the plot and the story time and B to just give them the benefit of the doubt maybe they're nervous maybe they're anxious maybe they just need to warm up to me before they can show me a better side of themselves just trust your gut trust your gut please this latte is magnificent by the way so we're sitting there and this was a while this was like two years ago okay we're sitting there for a while. We're kind of in and out of conversation and working. So he's taking some meetings and I'm getting my stuff done on my computer and then we'll have a conversation, whatever. Because at the end of the day, I was there to work and I was not gonna let somebody like completely distract me from that. 
So by the end of it, the cafe was closing and he's like, what are you up to right now? I was like, oh, nothing. Like, and he's like, do you want to go grab some food? And I was like, yeah, let's go get some food. I had driven that day and he was giving me like decent energy. Honestly, I don't think he was like a killer or anything. Like he just wasn't my vibe. Um, he was giving me good energy. So I was like, yeah, you can get in my car. I'll drive us, whatever. So I drive us to the pizza shop that I had recommended. And he just felt the need to keep saying, I have a car, I have a car, I have a car. I just like don't drive it downtown because of traffic. So I take my car to the go station and I drive it from there, but I have a car. I was like, okay, cool. Like I'm not judging. Like if you had one or didn't, I don't really care. It's not like I thought I was gonna marry this man. So I didn't care if he had a car. I just thought he was cute and he seemed nice. Anyway, so we're having some more conversations in the car and he keeps saying like, okay, let me know what you think about this. Cause I really want to know your opinion. And I would start to give him my opinion and he'd talk over me and just be like, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. What did you have to say? And I would talk and he'd just keep talking over me and saying things and I'd be like, why are you asking me questions? Then he starts talking about his ex. His ex that he dated for three weeks and they broke up six months ago and he would not stop talking about her. And he was telling me how it was his birthday. Oh, he had the same birthday, by the way. And it was like two days after her birthday. He was talking about how, you know, he had messaged her on his birthday, talking about don't message me happy birthday or don't, I don't remember what he said, but he was basically like messaging her saying like, please stop reaching out to me, don't reach out to me. But like she hadn't reached out to him ever. Like he scrolled up and like there, like he was the one that was texting and getting left on red. And then he was telling me how like, he wants to message her to reach out to her to delete the picture of his hand on her app because there's like this wine account where you post bottles of wine and you leave reviews and you tell people what you think of the wine and like she has a picture of his hand holding a wine bottle on the app and he messaged her saying like, or he wants to message her saying like, can you please delete this? And then he asked me what I thought about that and I was like, I think that's fucking crazy. Who cares? It's a wine app and it's your hand. You don't have any tattoos, who cares? And he's like, well, I just think it's inappropriate to have, you know, like, I was like, okay. So he kept talking about his ex, he had a big ego. He was giving narcissist. Honestly, this is what I've realized. Most of the people that approach me off the street give very narcissistic energy. I don't want to diagnose anybody, okay? But I dated a narcissist. And I, I, I've been around them, but I dated one for a while. So I've seen, I've seen narcissism <laughs> in its truest form. And I've seen the red flags early, but didn't realize what they were at the time. People keep messaging me, leave me alone. I didn't realize what they were at the time. So now I can pick up on those things fast, fast. This man was giving narcissistic vibes all around and all the people that approach me off the street do. So anyways, he's acting a little weird. Then he starts like messaging me after our date talking about he wants to listen to my podcast. He starts listening to all my podcast episodes, sending me movies. Let me pull up these messages. Damn, I had the messages in my phone, but they got deleted. He starts like triple, quadruple texting me and I'm just like, sir, relax. <laughs> relax oh I also want to mention what we did we went for pizza and then we went to go for drinks after he wanted to go to a museum but I didn't want to go because we'd gone for pizza right and he didn't pay for it sir you asked me if I wanted to go for food it was like a are you hungry do you want to go eat casual yeah but you still asked me if I want to go for food so I found it really weird that he didn't pay I typically uh, that's the only time I've ever not paid on a date. I don't think it was a date though. Um, but I did find it weird. He wanted to go to the museum after and I said no, because I was like, I'm not about to spend 50 bucks to go to a museum with somebody that I don't really know. Um, yeah, he might pay, but he also might not. And I'm not really trying to risk it and take the L on 50 bucks. Even though 50 bucks is not that much. It's just like, why am I gonna spend 50 bucks on company that I don't feel like being around, right? So anyways, we go for pizza, he doesn't pay it. And then we go for drinks. And this is when it got weird. We're going for drinks, he's talking some weirdo shit. And eventually, like, he's saying like, he's gonna pay for the drinks or whatever, which I'm like, cool, okay. And then he's like, just like, don't get the most expensive one as a joke. And I was like, ew, it's so disgustingly tacky. Like, uh, that wasn't my plan, but like, you don't have to say that. So he says that. And then I made a joke that was like kind of offensive, but it wasn't actually, I was just like making a joke and he's like, oh, watch what you say, I'm paying for drinks. I was like, what? Sir, nobody's begging. So then I said, I can buy my own drinks. If you don't want to pay for the drink, if you can't afford it, I can pay for it myself, that's fine. He's like, no, 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 I was joking. I'm happy to buy your drinks, I'm just joking. And I was like, okay, well, I don't think that was funny. I didn't think it was funny, I thought it was weird. 
and controlling and weird. Anyways, so we're having drinks, whatever, whatever. And then as the server comes up, he was like, do you want to have another round? And he's like, no, no, I don't want to spend too much. I'm good. And he looks at me and I was like, I'm good. I'm okay. And at that point I was ready to go home. Then he like followed me home. It was weird. I was at a bar right across from my condo. So I was like, he was offering to walk me home. And I was like, honestly, it's okay, blah, blah, blah. He's like trying to walk with me. I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. So I tell him, I will walk you to the bus stop if you want to take that bus over to your car, since you have a car. I'll walk you to the bus stop. And he's like, no, I'll walk you. I said, no, I'll walk you. I will walk you. It was the weirdest thing. He wanted to walk me home so bad. And I was like, no, no. He's like, do you live around here? I was like, no, oh, I live a couple blocks over. I lived right there. <laughs> I said, I live a couple blocks over. Anyways, I walk him to his bus. I wait for the bus to like drive up like past where I can see it. And then I get my ass home. And then he starts texting me, texting me, texting. Paragraphs. I wish I had them still. Paragraphs. And I was like, bro, relax. It was so weird. And I realized this is not it, so I cut it off and I was like, no thank you. I think I sent him a message being like, hey, like I'm not really interested in like getting to know you further. That was boy number one. Boy number two, I call him Mr. Ukraine. Mr. Ukraine had just come from Ukraine about six months prior. He had lived in Mexico with his ex for a while. He had a thick Ukrainian accent. He was very handsome, tall, wealthy, a little bit of a snaggle tooth. Other than that, he seemed like a great guy. I was sitting at a park in Toronto called Trinity Bellwoods Park. It's like the central park of Toronto, okay? It's poppin'. And as I was leaving the park, Mr. Ukraine approaches me and he says, hello, you're a very beautiful girl. You know, I never, I can't do the accent. I'm so sorry, let me stop. You're a very beautiful girl. I've never seen anybody like you before, da 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 da. Like, what are you doing right now? I was like, oh, I was just going for a walk. He's like, what do you just get up to? I was like, I'm coming. I was literally coming back from a photo shoot. I was looking good. Face beat, hair done, outfit on point. I had literally just come back from a shoot. So I was like, yeah, I just did a shoot. He's like, oh, that makes sense. Model, beautiful. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you already know. <laughs> this man is like, what are you doing? I was like, nothing. I'm just going for a walk right now. And he's like, do you want to go for a drink right now? And I was like, fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> the reason why I felt comfortable with this is because this is downtown Toronto. This is not the middle of nowhere where you have to get in a car and drive off with a person. Like, we literally just walked like two steps to a bar in front of us because we were right in front of a bar and we sat on the patio. It was chill. He was really sweet. He carried my bags all the way there. I mean, it wasn't that far, but he carried my bags. He pulled out my chair and he asked me what I wanted and then he ordered it for me, which was really nice. So I was like, okay, cool. And then I was like, oh no, she didn't bring a straw. And he's like, and he gets the waiter, he's like, could we please get a straw for the beautiful lady? And the lady gives him a straw, and then he takes the straw, and he puts it in my drink, and he mixes the drink around to get the ice and all that. So I freeze, because I'm a woman, and this man's mixing my drink, and it freaked me the fuck out. I got so paranoid. <laughs> I was like, what if he had a pill in his hand, he dropped it in and he mixed it in and he did it so quickly and so smooth, you know, you never know. So I didn't drink the drink and he's like, why aren't you drinking your drink? And then I got even more paranoid. So I was like, oh my God, why aren't I drinking my drink? And we keep talking, he's asking, he's like, why aren't you drinking your drink? And I was like, honestly, like I was honest. I was like, you know, when you took the straw, like you mixed my drink and it freaked me out and I just don't feel comfortable drinking it. I just, I was straight up. So I was like, what do I have to lose? Like, I just go home and never see this man again. You know what I mean? So he was, he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for that. He's like, I just wanted to be a gentleman and put the straw in. And I saw the, the ice was melting. So I mixed it for you. He's like, I'm so sorry. He's like, let me take this. He drinks the drink. He's like, let me get you another one. So he orders another one for me. And he goes like this. He's like, here you go. Enjoy it. And I was like, Honestly, I don't think he did anything to it looking back, but like it was weird. Okay, so I was like, I'm not I'm not taking no chances So anyways, I get another drink. We sit we chat whatever. I didn't feel a connection I felt like we were just from two different worlds like We were so different and I just didn't find him funny at all and this what's funny is like this guy that I liked FaceTime me and while I was on the date and I answered the FaceTime <laughs> And I liked him at the time, but I don't think I knew I liked him at the time. 
And I just like wanted to talk to that person on FaceTime. But then I showed up like, I'm with a stranger. <laughs> and the guy's like, hello. <laughs> and it was just so weird. Like it was a really weird vibe. Um, anyways, but it got weirder. This is not even the story. So anyways, fast forward, he asked me on another date. I'm like, mm, let me feel it out. He had a great idea for a date. He sent me a reservation. He sent me the thing. He's like, I can Uber you or you can meet me there. It's up to you. I was cool with it. Tell me why this man, the date is in five days, okay? This man texts me 25 minutes before date as I am getting ready for the date, okay? I lipstick on, ready to go. He says, I said, oh, girlfriend, <laughs> what? So I text him and I'm like, haha, you didn't tell me you had a girlfriend. <laughs> he said i know happens something like that and then i said i'm no longer interested have a good night what at no point did you think to tell me i have a girlfriend i have a girlfriend like cool you have a girlfriend okay that's somebody's cup of tea not mine not mine no you couldn't tell me that two hours before the date. I just wasted foundation. I put my contacts in and you tell me girlfriend. So the man texts me about two months later telling me, you know, I could have been the one that got away and he would not like himself if he didn't at least try, but he's single now and he really wants to meet up with me. So I did it for the plot. <laughs> I told him to meet me at a bar that was 30 seconds from my home. And I spent about 45 minutes with him because I was curious. I was curious. So I sat with him and I asked him, so what did you want? Did you want a throuple? Did you want a threesome? Or were you trying to be friends? Like what, what was it? And he said threesome. Cool. I thought you were recruiting me for a throuple. Um, threesome was somewhere in there, but I felt like, eh, you know, it was really soon. So I asked him, I'm like, so why didn't you message me beforehand or tell me when we met about your girlfriend? Like we could have cut this way sooner. He's like, you know, usually we approach women together, so I just didn't really know how to go about it. But when I saw you at the park, like I couldn't miss the opportunity to talk to you and, you know, share you. To me, it was giving, ooh, I found a beautiful black girl at the park. We should try a black girl one day. <laughs> That's what it felt like. So yeah, he just wanted a threesome with his girl, but then he wanted to date me after. And he was really trying, he was really pursuing, and I told him I'm not interested. But he was very generous and he liked to spend, which I liked, but never saw him again. So the next man is Turkish Delight. Turkish Delight is another one that I met at Trinity Bellwoods. I've met many people. By the way, I'm skipping a lot of people because there's too many, but I'm just sharing some of the weird ones. Turkish Delight approaches me at Trinity Bellwoods Park, same park. It's nighttime, I'm with two friends. He comes up to us, hello, you know, is anybody who eats around here? Talking about where is there a good spot to eat, like usual. And we give him a few and he's like, is it okay if I sit down? So he sits down and we're just drinking. We ran out of alcohol. So he says he'll buy us another bottle. So then my friends are like, okay, like, do you feel safe like walking with him? Cause he's clearly interested in you. He was heavily pursuing me. And I was just like, yeah, I feel safe. Like, you know, I'll just go for a walk with him, grab the bottle. I'm also not an idiot, by the way, I'm very safe. My friend has my location. like. I do things logically. I know it sounds like I'm foolish, but I'm not. Like I take precaution. I just I'm not giving all those details. Plus I'm young and live downtown. Like if there's a time to be foolish, it's then. So anyways, we go for a walk, we walk to 7-Eleven, um, get some snacks, and then we go to the wine rack and we go get a bottle. And I'm pointing out these bottles that my friends and I wanted, and he's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. And he picks up the cheapest bottle of Jackson Tricks. I'm like, okay. Don't offer to buy me a bottle if you're gonna go for the cheap. This is the thing. Why do men act like they want to spend and then they don't spend? I don't need you, sir. But if you're here and you're offering, don't be cheap. Just don't offer. So he buys the cheapest bottle. Whatever. It still got us drunk. I was okay with it. We walk back. He's acting a little weird. Um, and then I was with a friend of mine who was pansexual and mostly dates and hooks up with men. We're no longer friends, but we were friends at the time. And uh, the guy was making all these weird comments about like sexuality and he's just like bro I don't understand how you don't like her. She's beautiful woman. How do you not like her? 
And then my friend at the time kept saying, well, I mean, I'm pan, so I am attracted to her, but you know, I like men too. He said, I just don't understand how you don't like women. I don't, they're so beautiful. And like, I get where, like, mind you, he was very foreign. He had just got to Canada like two months prior. And apparently Turkish people love black people. I don't know, but he was very set on like, how do you not see her as beautiful? I get he was trying to compliment me, but it was just like the worst approach. And it was just very much like, why are you gay? I don't get it. And that's weird. Why are you talking like that? Shut up. So my friend at the time was getting offended, rightfully so. And this guy just kept going. And then eventually I was just like ready for him to go and he wouldn't leave. And like, he's just like playing Turkish music and we're trying to play music and he just keeps like, I want you to hear this Turkish song. I want you to hear this Turkish song. And like, cool, it was a vibe and all I guess. But like, I just wanted to listen to some Janae Aiko while I was drinking wine at the park. Like, I don't know these Tur Turkish songs. Like, yeah, they were catchy, but they were very like housey and I don't really like house music. So he was just like very like forceful on that. And like, he also was just like talking over me. And I don't know, it was weird. And then the weirdest conversation happened. So let me show you. So he messages me the next day. He's like, hey, it's blank. Is something wrong? Oh, cause I blocked him on Instagram. I just didn't want him creeping me. I didn't answer. And he's like, I thought we would go to date. If your emotions related to alcohol, try not to drink, I guess. I was like, what? I guess cause he got triggered that I blocked him. So he's like, I don't know. But for you to like say don't drink if your emotions are related to alcohol, it was weird. Part of me was like, Maybe he's just like not good with English and the like, you know, it sounds bad, but I also feel like if your emotions related to alcohol, try not to drink, I guess, like that just felt like an attack. I don't know. So I was like, what emotions are you referring to? And um, cause I didn't answer his first message. And then I was just like, I'm not sure why you're being rude about it and telling me I shouldn't drink. And then he's like, and you followed me on Instagram and unfollowed me since we met face to face, didn't get anything. And I never even asked what, for your Instagram, it was you. He did ask me for my Instagram, it wasn't me. And I'm like, yes, I changed my mind and realized I don't know you well enough to have you on this app. I didn't think it was a big deal, to be honest. Then he tells me he had an accident after leaving me that he fell off the bus and got stitches. And I was like, I'm sorry to hear that. And he's like, now it's bad luck. And I was like, okay. And then he's like, anyway, sorry if I sounded like I was judging you or forcing you. If you are thinking the same to know me, that's fine. And I just didn't answer. And then he sent me another message saying hi. And then I didn't answer. And then a month later, he sent me another message saying hi. And then I didn't answer. And then another month later, he sent me another message saying hi and I didn't answer. And um, yeah, he was very handsome, by the way. Very handsome guy. Honestly, most of them were, except for Mr. 5'2". Mr. 5'2 was not my type. He wasn't 5'2". He was like 5'8". He was shorter, he's like 5'7". He was like 5'7". Um, I met this man at the, ooh, should I say it? Mm, he might watch my channel. I met him at the mall. I've met many people at the mall, at many stores. I'm gonna keep this one short because we still have each other on socials and if any of these people are gonna see this video, it would be him, which I don't think he will, but okay. Long story short, met him at the mall. I didn't really realize his height at the time because I think I was like leaning, I don't know. I got on this date and I was wearing the prettiest outfit. I was wearing a dress and little heels and I was towering over this man. I'm so sorry. There is nothing wrong with being a short king, but I don't want one. I don't really want one. I'm a tall girl. I like to wear heels. I want to look up at my man. I don't want to, I don't want a short king. Some people do though. Anyways, so um, yeah, we go on an amazing date. Like, <laughs> the date itself was great. I didn't enjoy the company. But the date on paper, wow. It was a great date. 10 out of 10. One of the best um, situational dates I've had. But I just like, I wish it was someone else. You know what I mean? Like I wish that somebody else and I could have experienced that date because I would have really enjoyed it more. But he was just doing the most. He talked about his ex a lot, a lot. She was the problem. He was the one who tried to make it work. He was the one who, it, 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 he was the victim. And it was too much for me because it just, it was reminding me of something like, it was reminding me of the way that my ex probably talked about me after we broke up. Um, you know, I don't know, but it was weird. He just kept talking about his ex the whole time. And 
like once he got started he wouldn't stop he talked a lot he'd ask me questions he'd talk over me he'd ask me questions and then he'd bring them back to himself he wasn't really listening he wouldn't let me finish any story he'd be like i want to hear about this like tell me what happened and i'd start telling him and then he'd get off track and then i'd never finish my story and i'm just like okay so why are you asking me why am i putting all this energy into telling a story and i don't even get to finish it like i didn't feel like telling you this but you pulled this out of me um yeah he he also did something really weird which he'll know if it was him when he sees this he pulled out a taser and like the taser freaked me out he offered it to me kind of wish i took it kind of wish i took it but it was just jarring because like i didn't know this man very well and like we're sitting in a car and he's holding a taser and at that moment i was like oh my god i'm in the car with a stranger who's holding a taser and anything could happen and it freaked me out and i didn't like that i was in that situation i just feel like maybe it feels casual and calm to you but you should not be pulling out tasers on first dates with women in cars because my anxiety was through the roof and i had to remain composed but i had an escape plan already in my mind my hand was on the door it was just a lot for me to take in and it was weird he was just like showing it to me but like it was like in his car i, I don't know he had like a bunch of them in his car that sounds wild um he worked at a store that sold them but you know anyways um this man was a little bit weird he was very persistent on seeing me again for a little bit of time but i think he got the hint and now we're like friendly we're cool online like i'll reply to his messages if he comments on my stories and such but like he hasn't asked me on another date he tried to for a while like he wanted to go like dancing but like there's this thing that every time a man finds out i'm half hispanic they want to take me salsa dancing and i just find it the corniest thing ever i cannot stand it every man always wants to take me salsa dancing and then they get upset when i don't want to and it's like I don't know you well enough to be bodies pressed up against each other like that. Um, I don't really feel like doing that. I'll do that with somebody that I'm attracted to and I, there's like energy, chemistry, but if it feels forced and if I feel like you just want to take me because I'm half Hispanic, I don't want to go with you. And they always be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And you told me to get out of my comfort zone. I was like, it's not a comfort zone thing. I just don't want to go salsa dancing with you, period. Anyways, those were some story times of some of the weirdest instances I've had with men off the street. So take advice from me right now. Don't do it. Don't go there. Meet them organically. Meet them maybe on an app. There's a little more accountability there because you can see their profile. You can see their life. Me personally, I'm over apps right now. I'll probably redownload one day. But right now, I'm over it. I just feel like I'm cool off dating for a minute. I'm cool. So... No more men off the street for me, and hopefully for you too, because they're all a little weird. And every single one of these men, minus the Turkish man, gave me some slight, slightly narcissistic energy. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed my little story time, um, and I hope you take my advice. Don't give men off the street your attention, please. But if a woman approaches you, you're good. She's probably normal. <laughs> But again, if you are in a social environment, I do think it's okay. If you're at a party and they come up to you, if you're at a club, if you're at a bar, I think it's okay to entertain. But I think if they come up to you out of nowhere, I don't know, man. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, a subscribe, a comment, something to help me boost my engagement so we can feed this bitch into the algorithm so I can make more videos. <laughs> But yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.